If you're new to React, you could benefit from learning from the success and failure from React developers who've learned valuable lessons from using the framework. In this episode of Open Source Craft, we'll be giving you six pro tips from React developers. Tip one, use functional components. If you don't need internal state or lifecycle methods, use a functional component instead. Here's a class-based component that really ought to be a functional component, like so. Now, it's a pure function that accepts props as its argument and returns a React element. The benefits of functional components are, there's less code, so it's easier to understand. The component is stateless, so you don't accidentally store state on a component that you shouldn't. The component is simpler to test. There's no this binding. And it's easier to see when and where to extract smaller components. Which leads me to tip two, keep your components small. Small components are easier to read, test, maintain, and reuse. Here we have a comment component. It contains a comment div with a user info div inside of it, along with a div for comment text and comment date. But if I'm going to use this user info information throughout my application, I want to extract this into its own component. In this case, a functional component. Then. I'll just neatly tuck the user info component within my comment component and wherever else in my application that I'll need it. Since I'm now in a functional component, I do not need the this dots, so they'll get deleted. And if I wanted to make this even more modular, I could take out this block of code, make it into its own avatar component, then switch this out and nest avatar within here. Now I have my avatar component within my user component within my comment component. They are compact and simple to read, reuse, test, and maintain. Tip three, understand how to handle this. Remember tip one, since functional components don't require this binding, you'll want to use them whenever possible. But if you are using an ES6 class, you'll want to bind this manually since React doesn't auto bind the functions within that component. Here are several methods for doing so. One method is to bind in render, like so. This way is succinct and clear and works, but it can cause a slight performance issue because a new function is going to be called every time this component re-renders, which could be frequently. Another option is to use an arrow function in render, like so. This is succinct and clear like method one, but like method one, it will also create a new function every time this component renders. Another method is to bind in the constructor, like so. This is going to solve the potential performance issues of methods one and two. Just don't forget to call super here in the constructor. Another method is to bind in the arrow function of a class property, like so. So this is very clean and readable, and it's gonna avoid the performance issues of methods one and two, and avoids the repetition of method three. Please be aware, however, that this method does rely on experimental features, and it's not an official part of the ECMAScript specification. You can enable experimental language features by installing and configuring the Babel package, and apps created by a Create React app have many features enabled. Tip four, use a function in set state, not an object. According to the React docs, React does not guarantee that state changes are applied immediately. Therefore, reading this dot state right after calling set state is a potential pitfall because this dot state may not actually be what you think it is. Instead of updating state with an object like we see here, we can update it with a function like so. The function will receive the previous state as its first argument and the props at the time the update is applied as its second argument. Tip five, utilize prop types. Prop types is a library for type checking props, and it can help prevent bugs by ensuring you are using the right data types for your props. It is an external library, so you're going to want to npm install or however you prefer installing. Then import the library and add prop types to the component. 
set the data type accordingly, and if it's required, add is required. Tip six, use React developer tools. Let's take a look at the features. Now looking at a web application built in React, we can see in the React tab, we can view the component hierarchy. And if we were to click on a component, such as this one, we can view the props as well as the state of that component. So as you can see, this is a very valuable and helpful tool to test and debug and really understand what's happening with your app. If you have any more React tips, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy coding.